Welcome back to the CryptoBot channel, everyone. My name is Josh, and right now, the Bitcoin price just perfectly retested this critical area of support, which means the price is still repeating history on the larger timeframes, while a new warning signal is once again flashing in the short term. So I'll be talking about that in just a moment alongside Ethereum, which is now forming a new pattern that we need to pay attention to. So I'll be talking about all of that and more later in this video. So definitely watch to the end. First of all, taking a look at the Bitcoin ETF news today because just yesterday we actually saw another large net inflow of nearly a quarter of a billion US dollars. And if we're taking a look at the breakdown, this was very interesting stuff that we saw yesterday. BlackRock, we actually saw a relatively average inflow for BlackRock, around a $320 million inflow into the BlackRock ETF. So that was relatively normal for BlackRock. But if we're looking at the Fidelity Bitcoin ETF, they actually had their worst day ever just yesterday with an inflow of only $1.5 million. And keep in mind, their average day is an inflow of $141 million US dollars. But what we also saw yesterday was a record inflow into the ARK Bitcoin ETF of around 200 million US dollars flowing into the ARK Bitcoin ETF just yesterday. That was their best day yet. And if we're taking a look at Grayscale, once again, we saw yet another outflow from Grayscale. This time around $300 million worth of Bitcoin was sold off from Grayscale just yesterday. And so this brings the overall net inflow. Once again, all of the inflows subtracting that outflow from Grayscale, that brings us a net inflow just yesterday of $243.5 million US dollars. And once again, as I've been saying here on the channel, if we're seeing net outflows, then of course that's bearish for Bitcoin in the short term, which can result in short term bearish price action like what we saw around one to two weeks ago. But just over the last couple of days, once again, we've seen actually some decent sized net inflows. We saw a decent sized net inflow on the Tuesday. And once again, here on the Wednesday, we saw another decent inflow. And so if this continues as more of a trend, if we continue to see net inflows in the hundreds of millions of dollars, ideally closer to half a billion dollars of net inflows each weekday, then under those circumstances, it's going to be very hard to see any significant bearish price action. Basically, we're most likely going to see a lot more bullish price action if we continue to see large net inflows like this, for example, continue. And now just before getting into the Bitcoin charts today, first getting into some other crypto news, which I'm sure a lot of you would be glad to hear that Sam Bankman Freed has now officially been sentenced to 25 years in prison. And now, in my opinion, I think this is actually pretty generous considering the amount of damage that Sam Bankman Freed actually caused. In fact, he was potentially one of the main reasons as to why Bitcoin did not even go to 100k in the last bull cycle because he was essentially selling people fake Bitcoin. If you essentially wanted to buy Bitcoin through FTX, you were basically buying thin air. And so let me know in the comment section down below if you think this is a fair sentencing, if you think he deserved more than this or not as much as this. Either way, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you're new to crypto and you have no idea who Sam Bankman Fried is, just count yourself lucky. But anyway, taking a look at the Bitcoin charts today, looking at the weekly time frame, and right now we are still potentially repeating history here on the larger time frames. Because just like what we saw in the last bull market back in 2020 going into 2021, we saw a lot of struggle around that all-time high breakout level, but then eventually we ended up seeing a major breakout to the upside above the old all-time high. And as you can see, we have extremely similar price action this time around as to what we saw in the last bull market. So basically history is essentially repeating as the price did struggle for a few weeks here around that all time high level, but it's looking like potentially soon we could end up seeing that next major breakout to the upside potentially in the coming weeks. So keep that in mind here on the larger time frames. we're still looking very bullish. But in case you're new to all of this, even during a larger bullish trend or a bull market, we can see short term bearish price action here and there. So just keep that in mind. Let's just say if we saw a 5% move to the downside, that does not necessarily mean the bull market is over. In fact, if we're taking a look at this three day Bitcoin chart, we can see so far throughout this very bull market that started at the beginning of 2023, we've seen multiple pullbacks along the way of actually around 20%, if not more than 20% for some of these larger pullbacks. And of course, just recently from high to low, we did actually have a recent pullback just over the last few weeks of nearly 18%. So that was yet another buying opportunity that we saw just over the last couple of weeks. 
And so once again, as I've said time and time again here on the channel, if we're seeing, let's just say around a 20% pullback, or even if we're approaching a 20% pullback, let's just say if we're getting to say a 15% pullback, getting close to that 20% mark, that is basically the area of maximum opportunity when it comes to pullbacks, at least in this bull market so far. And so if we're seeing a pullback of 10%, 20%, once again, that is normal price action even during a larger bullish market. And those are actually great buying opportunities if you think the bull market is going to continue, which right now we're still clearly within a larger bullish trend. And if we're taking a look at the short term, looking at the four hour time frame, over the last one day, we saw a perfect retest of this critical area of support, which is sitting in between around 68 and a half thousand to 70,000. And we saw a bounce basically right on 68 and a half thousand. And I said in my last video here on the channel, that was basically the final chance for Bitcoin when it came to this specific breakout right here, just for this pattern and also for this pattern. Because basically, as I said in my last video, if we started a break back below around 68 and a half thousand with candle closes back below that level, so confirming a break below 68 and a half thousand, then that would have been a short term bearish signal pointing towards potentially a drop back down towards around 66 to 67 thousand down here. But considering that did not happen and we actually defended that area of support right there and saw a bounce from 68 and a half thousand, considering that happened, once again, we're still technically actively playing out this breakout with an active bullish price target at around 73 and a half thousand. And so once again, as I've been saying here on the channel every single day since all the way back down here, I am longing this breakout to the upside. And I said that even before we saw the breakout, I said my trading strategy, once we see a confirmed break, let's just say if we break out above resistance, I said I will be entering a long position to trade that move to the upside. And that's exactly what I did as I shared here on the channel back then. And as I mentioned in my last video, once again, I took a small amount of profits out of that long position right around here, just in case we actually broke back to the downside. But I still left the rest of the trade open. Once again, I closed part of the trade, but I left the rest of the trade open in case we see this scenario that's playing out right now. Because once again, I'm still trading this move to the upside, still holding that long position since back down here, trading the move towards this price target at around 73 and a half thousand. But keep in mind, we still have resistance in between around 73,000 to 74,000, where the price could potentially struggle at. And so those are the short term support and resistance levels to pay attention to. And of course, we're still technically playing out this bullish inverse head and shoulders pattern with a similar price target at around 73 and a half thousand. And if we're zooming a little bit further into the short term, looking at the three hour time frame, we can see that right now a new bearish divergence is flashing on the chart. Because as of right now, the price action has already confirmed higher highs in the candle closes, while the RSI is forming lower highs. And so far, we do have one small confirmation for the lower high in the RSI with just one candle close in the red. And so technically speaking, this is one confirmation confirming the bearish divergence in the short term. But if we see more confirmation, then we can become more confident in this actually playing out because basically the more confirmation, the better. And if we only see one confirmation signal, like one red candle close, then essentially it's easier to invalidate the pattern with only one small bit of confirmation. And in case you're new to all of this, when I'm talking about confirmation in regards to the bearish divergence, I'm talking about cementing the lower high in place in the RSI because this is based on candle closes by default. And so, for example, if we don't see any red candle closes here in the price action, then essentially by seeing more green candles, that could actually drag the RSI further to the upside. And if the RSI creates a new higher high, then there's no bearish divergence. And so that's why we need to see some sort of quick turnarounds just in the short term in the RSI to cement the lower high in place to further confirm the bearish divergence. And usually that's done by a couple of red candle closes confirming. And now if this further confirms, as always, a bearish divergence usually plays out in the form of either choppy sideways price action or potentially a slight pullback as the most common outcomes from a bearish divergence. And so once again, if we see a little bit more confirmation confirming this lower high in the three hour Bitcoin RSI, then we could end up seeing a bit more of a break from this breakout to the upside, basically a pause here in the short term before we could potentially continue that larger bullish trend higher later on. And so once again, I'm still currently holding that long position that I entered all the way back down here, just in case we continue this move to the upside towards this price target. And in case you're wondering, I took that trade right there over on Bybit. So I'll make sure to leave a link to Bybit in the description down below and in the pinned comment. 
And if you actually use that link down below this video to make a Bybit account and deposit on that account, then you can get up to a $30,000 deposit bonus, but only if you use that link down below this video. But for whatever reason, if you cannot access Bybit or if you cannot KYC on Bybit, there is also Bitflex, which is another crypto exchange similar to Bybit, but you don't need KYC for Bitflex. And so I'll also make sure to leave a link to Bitflex down below this video. And if you use that link, it'll take you to this page right here where you can enter an exclusive Apple Watch Series 9 giveaway just by trading crypto on Bitflex. And so if you're going to be trading crypto anyway, you might as well check out those links down below this video to those exchanges to get set up or ready to go. And especially using those links if you wanna claim those extra bonuses. And if we're taking a quick look at the Bitcoin liquidation heat map, we can see a lot of short-term liquidity lying around $72,000. And so it's actually very likely that sometime soon we're going to see the price hit around 72,000, potentially around 72.2K, which is where there's a lot of liquidity. And if we're zooming out to a larger time frame here in the Bitcoin liquidation heat map, we can see a lot of liquidity sitting right around the all time high at around 74,000 or just underneath 74,000. And once again, in case you're new to this, these areas of liquidity kind of act as magnets for Bitcoin. Usually Bitcoin gets attracted towards where there's most liquidity. So keep that in mind. But anyway, getting into the Ethereum part of this video, this is on the weekly time frame, and right now we're still clearly within a larger bullish trend and holding above that critical area of support in between 3.4K to 3.5K. And as for resistance, we still have that important level of resistance at around 4.1K. And so over the last one day, nothing much has changed here on the weekly time frame. But if we're zooming into the short term, we can see that over the last one day, we saw a perfect bounce from this exact area of support, which was previous resistance. And that's sitting in between around 3470 to around 3530, once again, acting as support. And that happened just after we saw basically a perfect rejection from this exact level of resistance, which is sitting at around 3650. So those are the support and resistance levels to keep in mind here in the short term. And now what about other levels of support and resistance? Let's just say if we broke back below around 3470, then in that case, we could actually see a drop back down towards around 3.3K, which is the next major level of support or vice versa. If we actually saw a breakout back above this line of resistance at 3650, then we could end up seeing a move up towards this resistance in between 3750 to 3.8K. And once we see a strong confirmed breakout above 3.8K, then it's very likely under that circumstance that we will continue up towards this local high at around $4,000 to 4.1K. And technically speaking, this inverse and shortest pattern is still active on the chart because we have not actually seen an invalidation of that pattern by seeing a break back below the point of the breakout. But with that being said, even though we have not yet technically invalidated the breakout, obviously so far this breakout has been very weak with a lot of sideways price action and short-term bearish price action. And so at this stage, let's just say if I entered a long position right around here, considering the weakness in this breakout, honestly, I would not be betting too big on this specific breakout right here just for this pattern, once again, considering the short-term weakness in this breakout. And with that being said, taking a look at this new pattern that is forming right now on the four hour time frame, which is an ascending triangle pattern with an area of resistance sitting in between 3.6K to around 36.70 and an ascending line of support, which is currently sitting at just above 3.5K. And now if we see a break to the downside below 3.5K, we still have that area of support that I mentioned earlier in the video. And so I would only start to flip more bearish again in the short term if we see a confirmed break back below around 3470. And as for the bullish scenario, if we see a confirmed breakout above around 3670, basically above these highs right here in the price action, then obviously that will be a bullish signal for Ethereum, which will set up a bullish price target based on this ascending triangle pattern. And that price target would be sitting at around 4.2K or more specifically around 4230. And so for example, from the point of the breakout to that price target, we're talking about potentially around a 15 to 16% move to the upside, or just for example, with a 10X leverage long position entering at this breakout going towards this price target, that would be around a 150% profit. 
And so this is potentially the next trading opportunity that we can take a look at. Once again, potentially entering a trade once we first confirm a break out of this pattern right here. But once again, that has not yet happened. So as of right now, this pattern is not yet active and we don't yet have any price target in play because we have not yet broken either support or resistance. And if we're taking a quick look at the price of Solana on the two hour time frame, as of right now, honestly, this has not really changed over the last one day. We've seen a lot of choppy sideways price action, which is essentially still that bearish divergence playing out because once again, a bearish divergence usually plays out in the form of either short term bearish price action or new price action. But honestly, I don't exactly expect this bearish divergence to continue to play out much longer considering it's already played out over the last two days exactly as expected. And technically speaking, this price target to the upside at around $220 is still active on the chart because we have not yet invalidated the breakout for this pattern by seeing a break back below the point of the breakout. But keep in mind, we still have resistance to pay attention to at around 195. We still have more resistance at around 208 to 209. And obviously so far, this bearish divergence has played out over the last couple of days, resulting in short-term weakness. And as for short-term support levels, we have some support at around 180, which we have bounced from over the last one day, around 179 to 180, and more support down towards around 169 to 170. And in case you want to trade these moves in the price of any crypto, once again, check out those links down below this video to claim those extra bonuses. And if you want to actually know how to trade crypto, then make sure to watch these videos popping up right here on your screen. The video in the top left shows you how you can make money no matter if the price is bullish or bearish using long positions or short positions. And the video in the bottom left shows you how you can easily profit from choppy sideways price action. But anyway, that is everything that I have to say for today. I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video.